Hi, uh, I have uh, an MSI 240R AIO, uh, and I have idle temperatures around 60 degrees Celsius for my CPU. Uh -huh. And I was told that uh, I might need to have it replaced. Okay, if you provide me the serial number. Oh, give me one second. While I'm looking for it, do you know if there are any issues with those AIOs? Uh, yeah, um, some of the AIOs, uh, tend to have some issues, uh, with temperature, um, so, I was trying to see if you would be approved for the recall, so I'm asking for the serial number, um, oh, there's a recall? you approved for the recall, uh, for certain serial numbers, or certain models, um, they could be approved for that, however, if it's not, then you're just gonna go through a normal RMA service, uh, however, it'll be, like, the same thing, um, the thing is, you're just gonna have to send in your liquid cooler to us, um, and then after that, we'll replace it and send it back to you. Okay, uh, looks like this device doesn't uh, qualify for a recall, but you can still get an RMA service, which is just replacing it. So it doesn't okay. qualify for a recall? It, I, I bought it uh, less than a year ago from, from Best Buy. Is it normal for AIOs to die that quickly? serial number in it does not apply for recall but it's basically the same thing same process uh, okay so i have to wait now experts. yeah i have to wait till i you know till you look at it and then deem it not worthy and then at that point you'll send me a replacement so it could take a few weeks then yeah uh it'll probably take up to two weeks or maybe less okay okay um i will uh I'll probably give it a few more days then, because I don't want my system to be down for that long without having another cooler to put on it. So I'll just go yep. through normal RMA then. That's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you for the help. Yeah, no problem. You have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, but not broken in the general sense. This one has an overheating problem, but as usual here, we have to vet these claims. This owner says that idle temps reach up to 60 degrees Celsius at times, which is definitely not normal. So that's the very first thing we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna see just how hot she can get. Woo -wee. And after just powering this thing on, she's already quite loud and oh yeah, I can feel, I can feel the temp in these tubes. The radiator though, isn't getting very warm. Warm, so I think we've got a circulation problem. I haven't even started the stress test yet. And you can see CPU diode and package temps both hit 87 degrees Celsius. This is just from starting up Windows and opening a couple programs. That is not normal. And I've also verified that he's not running any crazy overclock. Uh, I don't see any crazy voltages here. You can see peak uh, frequency, 4,800 megahertz there. But uh, most of these cores have been pretty chill around 3,600 megahertz. So. What I'm going to do, I don't think it's going to last very long, but I'm going to go ahead and start the burn-in test, including stressing the GPU. The only thing not stressed here is local disks. I'm going to leave the left side panel off, just a kind of a best case scenario, and if it still overheats, you know that it's bad. So let's go ahead and click start, and we'll see what happens. And right away you can see, uh, yeah, diode temps 91 degrees Celsius. That is... Not good, and what I imagine is happening as well, we can verify this in IDA64, uh, his CPU frequency is probably being throttled back. It's pulling back voltage in an effort to save itself from overheating because this is not good. These here are his current CPU frequencies. You can see some of these cores are dropping below four gigahertz under a supposed full load. This is far below what each is rated for. Uh, and as a result, since we can't sustain higher boost frequencies, you're gonna see a pretty decent performance hit as well. So if you're gaming, you'll see a noticeable frame rate drop. And if you're content creating, it just won't be as smooth. Things won't render as fast. So we have a fairly obvious CPU overheating issue on our hands. And I think the quickest way to address this is to outright swap the cooler. If you notice that MSI... <laughs> Let's, uh, let's try that again. So uh, clearly there's a temperature problem here and I suspect it has something to do with the fact that we have an MSI AIO in here. Uh, some of these units have already been recalled. In fact, one of our videos, I think, led to the recall itself when we realized that these were clogging up prematurely. This one, however, as you heard from that phone call earlier, 
is not on the recall list for whatever stupid reason they could come up with. I'm sure they are trying to downplay the situation by only pinpointing certain serial numbers, but this one, it looks like, has the issue. So we're gonna take it apart, make sure that it is clogging, and then replace this AIO outright with one from Be Quiet to get them back up and running again with safe temperatures. Are you guys ready? We're gonna do all that right after this. Stay with me. If you're looking for a modern way to work with email, consider Mailgun. With its data-driven approach and easy-to-use UI, you can reach real customers at scale. Through its powerful email API and intuitive email marketing solutions, Mailgun controls the entire email lifecycle from pre-development through delivery, supporting companies like DHL, Wikipedia, and Microsoft. You'll find useful tools like Send Time Optimization, which automatically tracks and pushes emails to individuals at the times they're more likely to engage with them. You can also create massive reports for large email lists and test and avoid things like spam filters the next time you click Send. Mailgun is the most relied upon email platform for growing businesses, and we greatly appreciate their continued support of this channel. Give them a shot today by using my link, mailgun.com forward slash Greg, which you can also find at the top of this video's description. Checking in once again on this stress test, only been running for about five minutes, which is nowhere near long enough to allow a custom loop to fully saturate in terms of how much heat is being dumped into the closed system. And we are pegged at 91 degrees Celsius. The entire test, it's been pegged at this, both CPU package and diode temperatures. This tells me the CPU is working extra overtime to keep temperatures safe. Even though this isn't T-junction, it's still not a comfortable temp at that. Now, because I'm a curious guy, I wanna see what this system looks like under load through our thermal imaging camera. And you can see that uh, for the most part, the heat looks to be evenly distributed. Looks like heat is being pulled through the fluid uh, in the tubes toward the radiator, which is quite hot over here on the right side. I just don't think it's pulling the heat away quick enough from the CPU, and that's why temperatures are so high so quickly. So let's turn the system off and take a closer look at the AIO, shall we? So you're moving this, and yep, we've got pretty even distribution of paste, enough thermal paste there. Looks like we had enough mounting pressure just by the way it's spread. So uh, I don't think this is a mounting problem. I don't think it's a voltage problem because we checked that in the BIOS. So I'm pretty certain at this point that the AIO is clogged. Now I want to start disassembly here on the block side because you'll find the very tiny micro fin stack in here that's uh, it's there to absorb all the heat from the CPU, increase surface area so that this uh, becomes a more efficient process. And you'll find the clogs, the gunk and stuff, uh, we usually accumulate here because the channels are so small. I'm also curious if the coolant in this one is uh, a brownish color, which we've noticed with other closed loops from MSI. We've got one more over here at the bottom. And all will be revealed. We'll know right away if this was to blame. I, I suspect it is because we've pretty much narrowed down the culprit to being uh, AIO related. So, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is, <laughs> this is gross. This is pretty bad. I'm not even gonna bother taking this apart any further than we already have. This speaks for itself. You see all this gunk, all this debris in the center? So this is the center part of the channel here. And what'll typically happen is the fluid will uh, move from the center from the channel down and then out to the sides through these micro fins. I know it's hard to see on camera, but they, these are tiny, tiny little fins and the fluid's supposed to travel through those. But of course, when you have all this debris, all this gunk in the way, you get a disruption of fluid flow, which means heat can't be pulled quickly enough away from the CPU to the radiator where it can be dissipated to atmosphere. Uh, so this is just, uh, the writing is on the wall. It's an AIO that needs to be recalled. It's very clear to me at this point that MSI is not taking this as seriously as they should. Dear MSI users, recently we received feedback from some of our users that they experienced a drop in heat dissipation efficiency when using the Mag Core Liquid 240R and Mag Core Liquid 360R liquid coolers. Our preliminary investigation has identified a small portion of liquid coolers produce sediment that can cause a blockage. This, however, will not cause any damage to your system since the processors are equipped with a protection mechanism against overheating. Well, yeah, but that should not ever have to come into place on the back of a one-year-old AIO. It's just ridiculous. Uh, so the, the problem I have here is that MSI is very clearly downplaying it. At first, I wasn't willing to jump on that train because I, I couldn't prove 
that it didn't extend past those AIOs that were covered by the recall itself. Uh, but we have a scenario here where, and you saw in the beginning of the video, I'll play a small clip in a second, uh, where MSI says that the AIO is not one of these serial numbers covered in the recall. And as a result, you'll have to go through the traditional RMA process, which, which involves usually waiting several, several weeks to have your product investigated by teams there. And at that point, they'll either send you a refund or a replacement product. That's a very long time to go without a CPU cooler. Best thing to do, best thing I can, we can offer you is just the RMA. Um, just basically you send it in and we replace it. Uh, the recall is us sending the lid cooler to you and you sending the lid cooler to us after. So at this point, we'll be replacing this AIO. <laughs> this is really disgusting. It also smells. It has a, a distinct smell to it. I've uh, unfortunately smelled it more than once here on this channel. So it's not new to me, but uh, it is very gross. We're going to replace the AIO outright with uh, a unit from Be Quiet we've had good experience with. And hopefully temperatures right away should drop. Even idle temps should be in like the mid 30s. I mean, room temperature for coolant when you haven't stressed the CPU yet should be, yeah, what, mid 20s. So I don't expect the CPU to run any higher than mid 30s at idle. And uh, under load, maybe 60s, 70s, it depends on his settings. But I expect temperatures across the board will be much lower without a clog like this in the system. Now this here is the Be Quiet Peer Loop AIO we'll be replacing his with. This has the pump integrated in the tubing, so a bit unique there, and we'll have the AIO position like so, so that his pump is uh, lower in the loop position wise. Uh, this is the block side, and it actually has a reversible cap, so you can flip this text around if you integrate it or orient it another way. You can see that uh, large cold plate there will remove the sticker. It's a really nice, clean AIO. It comes with two uh, really silent fans as well, and I think this will be a noteworthy the difference between uh, yeah, what he's coming from. You'll find two Pure Wings, two fans included, and these are PWM controlled, which means you can have extra flexibility in terms of RPM. You can make these dead silent if you really want, or you can ramp them up pretty high RPM for excellent heat dissipation. They'll still run pretty quiet, even under full load. There's also ease of installation, no fancy trickery here. Looking pretty good. And what's also unique about Be Quiet AIOs is that you get extra coolant in the box if you want to flush things in the future or just top things off. Yeah, you've got this at your disposal. So this is what the build looks like with the new AIO installed. You can see we cleaned up cable management a bit as well, got rid of some of the loose cabling. We also made sure that we had barb sides down. This orientation ensures that the pump is sufficiently below other vital parts of the loop. What we need to do now is power the system on and check temperatures. I can feel fluid churning through the loop, so that's good. Pump is working. Immediately we get a post. And uh, once we hop into Windows, we'll open up IDA64 again. We're on the exact same stress test with the exact same bio settings. And we'll just compare and contrast temperatures. I expect things are going to be a lot cooler now. A few moments later. Oh my gosh. I'm going to get absolutely obliterated in the comments for this. I'm going to leave it in because that's just, that's my promise to you guys. I'm never going to cut stuff like this out, show you that I am human. I still make mistakes. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering why his temperatures were still really high. And I realized I forgot to remove something. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I know. I hear you. I hear you. And would you look at that? In this scenario here, our graphics card is often hotter than our package and diode temps in the CPU. So that's a, a drastic, drastic improvement. We are nowhere near that 90 degree barrier where before the CPU was throttling itself. This is awesome news. I'll let this run for about 30 minutes just to burn it a bit, make sure everything is stable on this side. And then we'll also check idle temps after. We'll see how quickly uh, those temperatures return to near at room temperature. Uh, so that we can, you know, just ensure that the, the fluid is, is not impeded by anything in the loop, which it shouldn't be. This is a brand new AIO, and I haven't heard of this issue with any Be Quiet AIO at all, which is why I wanted to outright swap his out. Some of you are wondering why we don't just replace the fluid in the MSI AIO, and well, that's because it involves flushing. You have to make sure you get all the contaminants out, refilling entirely with uh, new propylene glycol solutions, and I don't have many of those on hand. Uh, apart from the samples that we get in the Be Quiet AIO. So I'd rather just replace the cooler outright just for peace of mind's sake for the viewer. If this was one of my rigs, yeah, I might mess around with it a bit. I ended up letting things run just a bit longer, coming up on 46, 47 minutes here. And look at that, still stellar, stellar temperatures. Granted, we had the left side panel off for this test, so expect things to bump up a few degrees with the panel on, but I wanted to test the exact same way we tested the MSI AIO, so even playing field there. 
this is so, so much better. And lastly, after stopping the test, this has only been about 30 seconds since, the CPU temps are now down to, we're talking like low 40s, upper 30s. This is so much better than what we saw with MSIAO. So the rebounding is much better here. Of course, the fluid flowing unimpeded uh, is allowed to get rid of that heat quicker. And that's what you want to see in a closed loop like this. So here's the conclusion I'm drawing from all of this. It's very evident to me that MSI is not doing enough to address the coolant issue in these MAG240 and 360R AIOs. And I don't know how far this extends. Apparently it's limited to just these products and these have the pumps in the radiators. So I don't think that they're Asetek manufactured uh, and, and that could be part of the reason why these are just filled in different parts of a factory and the coolant wasn't QC'd like at all. And it's clogging up way too fast. Unfortunately, the AIO that was in here, the serial number of that AIO was not covered according to MSI under the recall. I'm not sure if MSI is calling it a recall, but it technically is what they're doing is a recall. And so that means this owner would have had to have taken his AIO out, packaged it up, shipped it to MSI, waited likely several weeks for them to run their checks, do their investigation, similar to what we just did here in a matter of you know, a couple hours, and then refunded the owner his money so that he could have bought something else to cool his CPU. We're talking about a system that could be down for several weeks if he doesn't have a replacement cooler on hand. And that's just not acceptable. If this was, not, not this AI, this is the good one from Be Quiet, but uh, you know, if his MSI AIO serial number did fall under the recall category, MSI would have sent a replacement first and then would have required him to package his up and send it back to headquarters, whatever distribution center they, they request. That's how all of these cases should be handled. It's very clear to me at this point that MSI is attempting to downplay just how many AIOs this is impacting. The fact that only a small few are being affected is just not, it's not good enough. And it's a shame to see that, that they're requiring these, these individuals that have these AIOs disassemble their rig, disassemble their cooler, package it back up, ship it out, and then wait. They should not have to wait any longer for a replacement product that you deemed worthy of shipping out in the first place. It passed QC, otherwise you wouldn't have put it in the box. And it's not their fault, it is yours. It ultimately falls on you, the responsibility of making sure that your AIOs are prepped and ready to go for the long term. So this needs to be addressed. It needs to be a bigger deal than they are attempting to make it. And I think the only way they could fix this is to widen the scope of the recall. They need to add far more serial numbers than what they currently have in the system to the recall process so that if anyone else has one of these closed loops and runs into high idle temps, uh, they can very quickly get a replacement from the company and then package theirs up. Will you have false positives? Yes, it's bound to happen, it's inevitable. But again, this problem shouldn't have existed in the first place. And I, I think the best way forward is to again, include far more of these products in the recall process. So MSI, we're waiting on you for an answer. Uh, hopefully, hopefully someone from, from MSI HQ watches this, someone maybe uh, with a bit of authority can address this and, and take it a bit more seriously than they are because it's, it's a shame to have to call and be told that your product doesn't qualify for the recall when we very clearly showed that it should. With that, let me know what you think about this entire ordeal. It shouldn't exist in the first place and I don't think MSI is taking uh, as much responsibility as they should be here. Again, they need to widen their scope. If, if you have an AIO like this, a 240R, 360R, those are the two products directly affected. It could be, a, a, it could be more than this, but uh, these are the two they've disclosed. Uh, and you're experiencing high idle temps, very high load temps, just abnormal, and you've made sure that the pump is working and that you've seated the block properly. And MSI is telling you that your product doesn't fall under under the recall just because of your serial number, I would love to use that as even more ammunition to, to convince this company that they need to widen their scope and include more serial numbers in this recall. It's very evident to me that, that this is not limited to what they're saying it's limited to. I think it's affecting more products than they're making it seem. And um, we, you know, we need to hold them accountable. This stuff cannot happen in the future. Uh, so again, let me know in the comment section below what you've experienced and uh, yeah, just uh, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching this far into this one. If you have not subscribed yet, consider getting subscribed. Subscribed. 
giving this one a like, and uh, yeah, sticking around for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.